Hello, this is Peter from astronomydrawings.com and today I'd like to discuss the binocular summation factor or in other words, how much more can you see with both eyes instead of using only one? Let me start by saying that this whole discussion is actually fairly pointless because observing with two eyes is a completely different experience. The feeling of total immersion that not even a 150 degree eyepiece could ever offer the strange 3D effect, the joy, the relaxation of observing with both eyes. Um, and then again, there are people who are having difficulties observing with two eyes. And then there is the great unknown factor, which is the human brain, which is both unpredictable and personal. But anyway, here I go explaining my two cents on the matter for what they're worth. Unfortunately, and for as far as I know, no scientific study whatsoever has been performed to shed some light here. And I mean a study that was performed from an astronomical and not a medical point of view. Back in 1965, Campbell and Green published their renowned study in which they concluded that detection increases with a factor of 1.41 when observing with both eyes instead of only one. And this figure has since then also been accepted by a part of the astronomical community. A factor of 1.41, or a detection gain of 41%, implies a telescope diameter increase of 19%. Or in other words, this 18-inch binoscope would yield more or less the same performance as a 21-inch monocular telescope. Now, it is generally considered that you need at least a 30% increase in aperture or 14% increase in diameter in order to have any visual difference at the eyepiece. So if we apply the Campbell and Green figures then having a binocular telescope would yield actually a very marginal difference compared to a monocular telescope and it would not really be worth the expense. After having observed with this binoscope for six years and having done direct comparisons between monocular and binocular vision several times every night because, because this binoscope is put in focus one eyepiece at a time, I dare say that all of this is nonsense. The Campbell and Green study was again a medical and not an astronomical one, so citing it for binocular detection under astronomical conditions is absurd. Piren already concluded in 1949 that there is no such thing as a single binocular summation factor, but that uh, binocular detection greatly increases with deteriorating conditions. The darker it gets, the better you see with both eyes. What does real science tell us? The extent of summation depends on the stimulus contrast and duration. There is significant summation at low contrast. At low contrast, the level of summation is greater than could be expected by probability summation alone. Summation depends on the complexity of the task, with simple tasks, such as detection, displaying far greater summation than complicated ones, pattern recognition. What does experience in the field tell us? Drop a big binoscope such as this one at the star party and then see where all the people are going. Seriously though, I've made a few direct comparisons between my 18-inch binoscope and big monoscopes. On the picture you can see the 18-inch bino with in the background two high-quality 20-inch scopes, one of which was coincidentally an f5, the same focal ratio as the bino. According to the 1.41 theory, these scopes should yield more or less similar performances. In reality, however, the 20 inch were no match at all for the binoscope which brought out details in faint objects which you could only dream of in the monocular telescopes. And this was confirmed by all present which were about 20 people and they were all experienced observers. Now I'd like to show you some direct comparisons I've made between monocular and binocular vision. Of course I do not wish to generalize these results in any way. They are just impressions that I've made with my eyes under my sky and with my telescope. But they may give you an idea of what you can expect. Overall, a nice way of putting it is that with binocular vision, I can easily see with 
direct vision when I can only perceive with averted vision in mono. Closing one eye not only a nebulous object becomes fainter or loses detail, but several faint stars disappear as well or become hard to see. Conclusion? Well, this is my personal opinion and I do not wish to present this as a real scientific result, but personally, over time, I've grown to the conviction that detection when using both eyes increases with a factor nearing to or possibly even beyond two, because it is less likely that a false light signal is accepted as true by both eyes simultaneously. So, in other words, this 18-inch binoscope would yield the performance of at least a 25-inch monoscope. One last thing. A binoscope has the exit pupil of the smaller scope whilst retaining the light gathering power of a much bigger scope, so lower power and still a lot more light. Or in other words, with a binoscope it is possible to observe objects with a much lower surface brightness. Now, if all of this is true and binoscopes perform so very well and they give you such an incredible sensation when looking through the eyepiece, then why is it that we don't see more of them? And why is it that there's, I think, only one manufacturer left in the world that makes them commercially, apart from a few home builders? Well, the answer is very simple, because binoscopes are incredibly, incredibly difficult to make. Even Mr. Otter, uh, who, who is the expert who made this binoscope for me. He promised me originally four months. In the end, it was almost two years uh, because so many problems arose during the production process and every new binoscope is always a new adventure. So binoscopes are simply commercially unfeasible. They are too complicated to make or to make any profit out of it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. So please subscribe to my channel and see you all next time. Bye.